Welcome to the Opus Projector Tool training. In this video, we want to talk about uh, diagnostic messages in J1939, specifically DM1 and DM2 messages. First of all, very quickly, um, set up the baud rate of your CAN port as needed, and in the terminal and owner ECU configuration, use J1939, of course, set up your address and address claim type, and set up your CAN ECUs. The any ECU is preset and set up any additional ECUs that you have in your system and set up their source address and address claim type. Okay, so I already created uh, a simple page with a table object. Um, let's remember the ID of this object because it's uh, important for the uh, DM1 setup uh, that I will show you now. So we go to the menu, communication, protocol, J1939, and then DM1, DM2 settings. So, okay, first thing is we can select a CAN port. Here we only have CAN1 because I have only set up J1939 on CAN1. If I did it for the other CAN port as well, I could do a different setting for the different settings for both CAN ports. Um, then we have a translation file. Now, I can show you an example of that. This is an exemplary translation file according to the J1939 standard. Um, so J1939 uh, DM1 or DM2 messages will only send you numbers. They will send you numbers. These are the addresses of the ECUs. They will send you numbers for the SPNs. So um, what, uh, what topic is it where we have a problem? and they will send you numbers for the FMIs, which is what exactly is wrong in this topic from this ECU. Um, and here you can put up a translation so that the ECUs um, have names, the SBNs have actual topics that will tell the user something, and the FMIs will be um, written statements that again uh, will show the user what is going on exactly. You can also set up a combination of a specific um, ECU, SPN, and FMI. So if you have um, a very specific uh, uh, type of problem, you can set up this combination of ECU, SPN, FMI, and you can give it a very specific. So normally it would say coolant temperature above normal. In this case, you can set up a specific message for any combination of that. So if you want to give a really uh, a very good and, and concrete advice, you can do that. Now this one, this uh, translation list is only for one language. Let's say you have a multi-language uh, project, then it will look like this. You have your SPN, and then after that, you just put in uh, with a semicolon as a delimiter, first language, second language, first language, second language, and so on. Same for the uh, FMIs, first in English, then in German, and again with the combination of SPN, FMI, um, your specific error message here, and then in the second language. So you can also use um, multi-language support in, in DM1, DM2. If you don't set this up, your DM1 table will only show you numbers, piles of numbers, and users most probably will not be able to uh, to do anything with that. Okay, so of course the first thing we need to do is enable DM1 support. Um, we can choose here to lock the DM1 message also to a file on the file system. We just have to give a file name right here. Um, we can also opt to open an alarm whenever the um, the number or the content of DM1 messages change. So whenever there is an update, something new, um, this alarm can open up. Um, and very important here, we can say that we want to uh, give a, a table where the uh, DM1 data uh, should be displayed. If we check this, we can set, it, set a table here and see this is the table object that I have created and it lets me pick that from this drop-down list. Here I can specify what information I want in the table. So, of course, I want the ECU. I definitely want the SPN. 
the OC, the occurrence count, I might not need because for DM1, um, it is always only the occurrence count is on, always one because it will uh, uh, send the message instantly if this problem occurs. It's not like a, a past lock. It is uh, current data, so I will not choose. I will choose not to have this, and of course, I will also extract the FMI. In the bottom, I can tell the program which ECUs I want to listen to. I can add specifics. Oh, I need to give the uh, uh, the address of the ECU. So let's see. And now I can. Um, filter the uh, uh, DM1 messages that could come from this ECU um, to only add, to only use specific um, SPNs. And I can again um, put these messages from this ECU to a separate uh, table. So if I have a lot of ECUs and I want to uh, filter and sort them in different ways, I can do that right here. Otherwise, I can just click track all ECUs and I will just get all DM1 messages from all ECUs in one table. And that's basically it for DM1. For DM2, um, there's even less um, that you need to set up. You just have to check that you want to use it. You again have to um, give a table so that the uh, P-Client can later populate it with the data from t uh, uh, DM2. And also, again, you can choose which kind of data uh, you want to have extracted. Now, for DM2, you will need a request message. Um, in this case, let me quickly check in the uh, wonderful toolchain manual. Um, EA00 and FACB. Okay, so let's set up uh, the DM2 right here. This is a transmit message. We click add. Um, we want to transmit this to all ECUs. Um, the mapping length should be 8. For the PGN we will use EA00 which is the standard um, global request message from uh, J1939. And well, we need to know when we want to send this message. So in this project now, I haven't really set something up. So normally I could use a specific variable change, and then I would choose a variable that I would use as a trigger for DM2. So for example, if I go on the DM2 page where my table is, um, when I go on that page or when I press the button for uh, to go on that page, um, this variable um, could be set up to change its value. And this would trigger the sending of this message. Right here, I only have to um, put in, let me check once again, two bytes, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, I will put in, uh, no, it needs to be, it needs to be two bytes. No, it's correct. I need to use a constant. Um, it is constant and the constant value is FECB. So what happens, this, the message is sent on uh, EA00 to all ECUs. It's a request message. And the first two bytes will be read out. And they will say, please send me PGN FECB, which is the DM2 PC, uh, PGN. So whenever an ECU that supports DM2 receives this message, it will then um, send the DM2 messages to the device, they will be extracted and then populate, the values will populate the table. And that's it for DM1 and DM2. See you in the next video.